And now it's time for Power of Prophecy with your host, former professor at the University of Texas at Austin, career United States Air Force officer, and best-selling author, Tex Mars. Hello, friends. This is Tex Mars. Welcome to another edition of Power of Prophecy. Well, we have a secrets volume today. This is volume 248. 248 volumes. We usually do about one volume a month. One volume a month. And uh, each time we cover, oh, 10 to 12 or 13 secrets. Of course, maybe you're already aware of these secrets. But again, maybe not. But you might hear a few details, even if you are aware, that may just get your attention or make you curious or uh, you want to dig into it more. For example, we're going to talk today about Ceres, C-E-R-E-S. You've heard about Ceres, the goddess of agriculture? Hmm. Ceres the goddess of agriculture, is she back? Could be. I, I saw her when I was in Chicago. I, I saw Sarah. I did. I was right downtown, and there she was. <laughs> we'll talk about Sarah, the goddess uh, returning. Then there's Pan and Baphomet. Have you heard about those false gods? They're uh, worse than God. They're, they're devils. Pan and Baphomet. They've also made a revival. You know, a lot of people say, well, I've never heard of gods like that. Ceres and Pan and Baphomet. Well, they're very popular today. Extremely so. You may want to talk about those uh, because I'm going to have fun with it today. And then there's Senator Bernie Sanders. You know, he ran for president. They say he only lost because Hillary Clinton cheated him. Rigged the election. Well, she tried to rig it against Trump too, but didn't work. But Bernie Sanders, he's, you know, an atheist and a socialist. Big fan of uh, Soviet Russia. And he says that a Christian is unfit to be a public servant. He, 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 I'm, I'm not kidding you. If you're a Christian... You are unfit to be a public servant. Maybe you didn't know that. Maybe that's why there are no no Christians in public service. Why? Can you name a senator or a congressman that you really trust as a Christian? Can you name, let's say, out of over 500 congressmen, senators, can you name five? Five out of five, over five, I think 545 total. Hmm. Well, a British radio host says there is a way to end terrorism. Easy. He's been criticized for saying that. Maybe we'll, we'll, we might criticize him ourselves or we might just give him an award. (laughs) Who knows? 57 scientific studies. We'll talk about that. Did you know there are 57 scientific studies, at least 57, just in 2016 alone, that talk about climate change? What did they find? Well, pedophilia. Oh, it's big now. Pedophilia. Child pederasty. Child sexual exploitation. You know, it's obsession of a particular group of people. Then there's the Christian church in North Carolina. It converted to Islam, a a Christian church. Changed the shingle on the door, says we're no longer a Christian church. We've been like that for decades, but we're going to change to Islam. And the Christian pastors of that community say, good. They got together and they celebrated, congratulated the Islamic mosque. That used to be a church. Oh, America's changing. And the man that was beheaded the same day he became a Christian. 
He became a Christian the same day he was beheaded. Wow. And he, and he was threatened. They, and they told him, if you become a Christian, we will cut off your head. And he said, I am a Christian. And they cut off his head. That takes, that takes bravery. That takes courage. That takes faith. That's, that's a tough one. Then, of course, there's special counsel Robert Mueller. What a rigged job that is. Looks like he's going to indict President Donald Trump for obstruction of justice. Oh, he's headed that away. Well, who put him in charge? Very strange. We'll talk about that. And then there was the Navy chaplain. Now, all chaplains pray for various reasons. And this chaplain was praying, and he was kicked out of the Navy for praying in Jesus' name. That's the name you can't pray under. You, you, can't, you can't pray in Jesus' name, and the Navy is a chaplain. It's unacceptable. Wow. Well, Southern Baptists are making big, big money now by helping to settle the immigrants from Mexico and Central America and so forth. They like it. The, the Southern Baptists have, have made it their job now to help the Muslims to locate here in America. And they're getting paid a quarter of a billion dollars. I, probably I'd like it too if I were a heathen, a pagan. We'll talk about that and then Maybe we'll get into the Democrats, the Democrat Party, who say there is an Orwellian sense and or unreality in society. There's an Orwellian sense of unreality as, as there are efforts by the Democrats to destabilize America and overthrow our president. Really? Well, we'll talk about that too. See, we have a great agenda today, don't we? Well, maybe we'll start off with something else. Talk about all those topics, but I, I got a very nice letter from Dr. Maria. I'm not going to tell you her full name. I, I rarely do that on this program. But Dr. Maria, of course, she's uh, written to me from the country of Greece. We have a lot of fans over in Greece. In fact, they sell my books, publish uh, Tex Mars's books in the country of Greece. And Dr. Maria wrote me a nice letter. And she said, Dear Tex, I want to really congratulate you about your recent radio program, Power of Prophecy, where you spoke concerning robots. It was entitled Robots and DNA Science Advance. Robots and DNA Science Advance. As a medical doctor, Dr. Maria is a medical doctor, as a medical doctor and a Ph.D. clinical neurologist, I was completely convinced years ago that psychopaths were not human, but satanically possessed. Did you hear that, friends? Dr. Maria says, as a medical doctor and a Ph.D. clinical neurologist, I was completely convinced years ago that psychopaths were not human, but satanically possessed. Well, that's exactly what I said on the radio, and she heard me, and she's writing to thank me for saying that. She says, I could not share this feeling with any other colleague, not even born-again Christians here in Greece. So imagine me, she writes. So imagine me, she writes, when I heard you saying that psychopaths are not human. That's what I said. Psychopaths are not human. You bet they are not, she says. <laughs> you bet they are not. Now, she writes, I've been studying them as psychopaths, 
since 1995 as a a neurologist and later as a born-again Christian. She studied them two ways. In her capacity as a medical doctor, as a neurologist, that's a, a specialist on the brain, and she studied psychopaths as a born again Christian. Now let's see what she's, what she's resolved from all this. She says, the Lord put me into deep spiritual paths from the beginning. I guess he knows best. I've been having horrifying experiences with these non-human beings, which classical medicine calls psychopaths. When I press them, some of them even admitted that they are possessed. So, she says this, she says, when I press them, that's these psychopaths she's working with, hoping to cure possibly, but she can't cure them. They're not human beings. They don't have souls. They're not, they're not like you and me, my friends. Psychopaths are born con men. They're born killers. And they glory, they have fun in doing what they're doing, which is to murder the human spirit or perhaps even the human body. And when I pressed these psychopaths, she said, some of them admitted that they are possessed. Hmm. I really thank you, writes Dr. Maria, for listening today to your program here in Greece from the Internet, as I have been doing for the last six years. I thank God for you and keep praying for you all. I wish I could meet you someday on this earth. Otherwise, we'll meet in heavenly Jerusalem. A great letter, isn't it? A great letter. I want you to think about that, friends. That, 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 that psychopaths. And, and many of them are in Washington, D.C. now, and they call themselves Democrats or Republicans. They're psychopaths. They're not human beings. Don't tell me they're human beings. If they promote abortion, they are psychopaths. They are monsters. They are not human. They have no souls. They're monsters. Well, Ceres, the god, the goddess that is of agriculture. You know, I read about her in ancient Greece, Ceres. Did you know that the word cereal came from Ceres? That's right. That's where we get our cereal. <laughs> from the goddess Ceres. She was said to be the prosperity goddess when you had plenty of food, plenty of crops. Her flower was the poppy. Hmm. Now think about that. Her flower was the poppy. Well, what's the poppy? The, obviously, they can make heroin and other substances. Now, a town in California named Cirrus is right. Cirrus is named after her. And the city of Chicago is a statue that has been erected to her in the commodities markets. The commercial area downtown. You know, I found that when I was driving around there in Chicago. I went down to this commercial street. And they had a big building. I said it was the commodities market uh, of the Midwest. The commodities market. The, the commercial area. Commodities market. And there was her statue on the top of a building. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Sarah's. And many worship her today. Well, what was that statue doing atop that building? Well, of course, they were giving her credit. They were worshiping her. Hmm. By the way, ancient Pompeii, where they had this mural... And showed a uh, an image of Cirrus. Was um, that was also a place where they worshipped the goddess of agriculture, the goddess of prosperity. And when they brought in their wheat and corn crops, in particular, of course, she got credit for that. Hey, by the way, there's another goddess that's becoming popular today too, named Pan. Now, I've mentioned this before, but when I was up in Seattle, Washington, many years ago, I debated some witches. 
they had me on this program, sort of like a, uh, I don't know, some debate program, and the host would come to me and ask me questions, and then he would bop over to the uh, somebody in the audience and kept the program, you know, going made it a little bit lively. And it seemed that all the witches there were talking about a god that they worshipped called Pan. And, of course, this witch accused me of not knowing who Pan was. She says there's Peter Pan, of course, but you wouldn't know anything about Pan as a Christian, would you? Sort of smart lady. But I told her I knew Pan. He was the horned god of the forest. And, you know, she was shocked. He's the horned god of the forest. And he's half man, half goat. He's got horns, but he's got hoofs like a goat. And I said, you worship him because he's the devil. Boy, she got like fell out of her seat. And the host quickly went up to her and said, do you worship the devil as Pan? She said, well, Mr. Morris has described him. He does have, you know, hoofs like a goat. And, and he has, you know, hair like a goat. And, but he stands upright and, and he, he, he has horns, but he's not the devil. We don't worship the devil as witches. And that was quickly came back to me. Did you hear that, Mr. Mars? They don't worship the devil. I said, listen, <laughs> you can call him any name you want. He'll answer to you any way you want. Call him Pan. Call him anything. But he's the devil. And I said, this lady here and every other witch knows it. Oh, yeah. He plays the flute, by the way, the pipes. Oh, yes. He plays music sympathetic to the magical harmony of the spheres. And that music is very seductive to the human spirit. In the zodiac, Pan is found. He's represented by Capricorn, the goat. And astrologically, Pan is Saturn, the sixth planet from the sun. Hmm. By the way, another very popular, uh, uh, let's just say representative today of the devil, is called Baphomet. Baphomet. And Baphomet is also a horned goat god. With hooves. And of course, his sexual, uh, prowess is on display. And recently, the Church of Satan has built several Baphomet statues. And they, they built a couple of children, boys and girls, and made it out that they were worshiping Baphomet. My friends, that's, that's a terrible thing. Well, a lot of people don't understand about Baphomet. And they see Baphomet and they, they don't realize that he's the devil. By the way, he has coming out of his head a single horn. And many times that horn is a flame. Yes, he has a horn that's alive and has a flame coming out of it. Baphomet. Hmm. They, they say that the head of the Knights Templar back, oh, in the 10 or 1100s, I forget just how long ago back that was. And his Knights of, the Knights of Templar, they worshiped Baphomet. It was a false god. It was the devil. The devil disguised or masquerading as a goat. And he has his hands in a position where one arm is pointed down and one is pointed upward. And the devil says that's our position our uh, of our hands. It's the as above, so below position. You see, the devil in Isaiah 12 through 14 says, I will be like the most high. He, he says, I will bring heaven and hell together. Above and below will be the same. That's why in Freemasonry they have the, the, the checkmate floor. Have you ever noticed that? Have a black and a white and a black and a white. 
You can play checkers with their floors. Checkmate floor. Well, Pan, Baphomet, Ceres, they're, they're all signs of the devil. All of them. Hey, talking about the devil, Senator Bernie Sanders, he's popular among the millennial youth. They don't realize this man is, in fact, a devil. Now, recently, President Trump nominated a Christian. He'd make a big deal of it as a Christian. But uh, to be head uh, or the assistant head of the the uh, office of, oh, the, the money man, you know, the budget director. He's the assistant budget director. And Senator Bernie Sanders was on the committee that, that oversees this guy's selection. And they have to vote on it, of course. Well, he was mad about it. Bernie Sanders didn't like this guy at all. He says, you're a Christian. You're an evil person. You, you actually didn't really believe, don't you? He said that it's important to worship God. And the man, what did the man say? He's a Christian. He said, yes, that's true. I do believe you, you should worship God. He said, well, how can you serve in the U.S. government if you believe in Jesus Christ? He says that people like me don't believe in Jesus. You know, he's a socialist, friends. And it's obvious that he is a socialist and an atheist. Hey, this guy is such, such a communist that he, that when he had his honeymoon, he had his honeymoon in Moscow, in Soviet Russia during the communist era. I don't know if anybody that was a honeymoon to Soviet Russia, but he did. Senator Bernie Sanders. Oh, yes. Well, Bernie Sanders says Christians are unfit for office because Christians believe that Jesus is the only way to salvation. And Bernie Sanders says that, no, I'm an atheist and I'm a Jew. Hmm. And he says, how can a Jew believe in Jesus? Well, that's a good question. Jews don't believe in Jesus. A few do, but most don't. But if you believe in Jesus, you're not fit to run for office. And I will not vote to nominate you to this budget director position. Well, the man says, I'm sorry, Mr. Senator, but I, that's what I do believe. But he says, I don't discriminate against people based on my faith. That's just what I believe. And, uh, you know, uh, there was another senator on that same panel. And he took up for Senator Sanders. And he told the, the Christian, the, the Christian man had not made a big deal of the fact that he was a Christian, but he was. In fact, the Christian said, I'm not going to discriminate against anybody. I'm going to treat everybody equally as an American. But Sanders said, how can you treat everybody equal? You're a Christian. Wow. And he says, I'm not going to vote for a Christian. Can't vote for a Christian. You know, our Constitution, my friend, says there will be no religious test for office. That means whatever you are, a Buddhist, a Christian, a Muslim, a Jew, a Hindu, you can still serve as, well, in any capacity in our nation. If you're elected in, yeah, you can. You can... You, it, it doesn't matter what you are. You can be president. You can be, well, anything. Just do your job. And and Christians are the nicest people of all. They'll be fair. But Bernie Sanders at this confirmation hearing, and by the way, Sanders is from Vermont, this nominee to be deputy director of the Office of Management Budget, Sanders said he wasn't qualified. Boy, he says, in my view, this is what Sanders says about this Christian man. In my view, the statement made by Mr. Vaught is indefensible. It is hateful 
It is Islamophobic, and it is an insult to over a billion Muslims throughout the world. Now, the Muslims don't believe in Jesus at all. And they're prejudiced because most of them believe in Sharia law, which is the Muslim law. And think about it. So you're unfit if you're a Christian, but it's okay to be a Muslim. He doesn't mind voting on a Muslim for office, but not a Christian. Maybe you ought to ask the Muslim, do you believe in cutting off people's heads? Do you believe in operating on a woman's genitals and taking them out? Cutting them out. Is that what you believe? How about honor killings? Do you believe that? Then you're a good Muslim, but you're a filthy, dirty American. How can you be a Muslim and serve in our country? Do you believe you're Islamophobic? Sanders asked of Mr. Vault, the Christian. Absolutely not, Senator. Vault replied, I'm a Christian. And I believe in a Christian set of principles based on my faith. And Sanders has the gall to say he's unfit for office. Well, I think Sanders is unfit for office. If you don't have Christian principles, you ain't got anything, my friends. And I think we ought to let this filthy, dirty, Jewish, atheist, socialist know of what we believe. By the way, this very morning... In Alexandria, Virginia, five people were shot, and one of them was killed, uh, not killed, but almost, Congressman Scalise, by a big supporter of, of Sanders. And remember during the, the, the political campaign, all those Sanders people go rioting and demonstrating, they were all paid, paid organizers, paid demonstrators. Amazing, isn't it? Well, in Britain, a radio host says that there is one way proven to prevent terrorism in your country. One way that's proven, he says. Well, I would like to know that. Wouldn't you like to know that, friends? Just one way to prevent terrorism. Well, he says, don't accept Muslims into your country. Then you won't have terrorism. Hey, that sounds pretty good to me. That's very simple. Wherever they're at, Indonesia, Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Syria, that's wonderful. I Iran, let them stay there. They'll be am among other uh, Muslims, and they'll be happy, I suppose. But it seems like a lot of them just want to come over here to be t a terrorist and to agitate and to destroy Christians. But this British man says, if you don't want terrorism, there's one way to stop it. Just don't invite Muslims into your country. Wow. That's what it was. That's what he says. But over there in Britain, he's been, he's, he's, he's been attacked for saying that. Well, you can't say that. What do you mean he can't say it? Of course he can. Well, America's the only one where you can tell anybody that. Well, that may be true, but he's trying. All right. When we return in just a minute, we're going to talk about 57 scientific studies on climate change. What did they say? I'll be right back in a minute. It's been great. We've covered a lot of secrets here. We've got a lot more when we return, including that Christian church that converted to Islam. And all the local Christians are happy with it. Wow. That's amazing. And then the man that was beheaded the same day he became a Christian. Then there's the crazy Democrats. We'll talk about that and much more when we return in just one moment. You're listening to Power of Prophecy. This is Secrets. I am Tech Mars. Holy Serpent of the Jews is my newest book, Holy Serpent of the Jews. This is the rabbi's secret plan for Satan to crush their enemies and vault the Jews to global dominion. Holy Serpent of the Jews. You know, the World Jewish Congress got mad at my book. 
They don't like the title. The World Jewish Congress asked Amazon, the biggest seller of books in the world, to ban or censor the book. And you know, the crazy people there at Amazon decided to do it. I, we got a letter in the mail here at Power Prophecy Ministries, and they said that my book was selling just fine, and it was getting five-star, I guess five or four-star ratings. But they said they didn't want to offer it anymore because of its content. Well, you know, the crazy thing about this book is it's all about the rabbi's secret plan. And I quote rabbi after rabbi, the most famous rabbis in the world. They've got a secret plan. And they talk about their Messiah, who is going to come to give them the power and the authority to take all the Christians and kill them. Unless, of course, Christians will convert to Judaism and quit worshiping that idol god, Jesus. Then, of course, they'll be okay, but they'll still have to serve the Jews as slaves and serpents. Did I say serpents? Yes. <laughs> because the Jews are serpents. And, and they say we're the people of the serpent. How can that be? People of the serpent? Well, that's what Jesus said, too. He says, you know, your father is the serpent. And he's the one you will serve. Wow. Think about that. That's what Jesus told the Jews. He said in Matthew 23, verse 33, Jesus told the Jews, the Pharisees, he said, Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? That's pretty stiff language. Jesus didn't mess around, did he? He told it like it is. But evidently, Amazon, and Amazon is run by a Jew, Mr. Bezos, they say he's now one of the two or three richest men in the world. But he didn't want to offer my book anymore. And so they banned it. You can't buy this book from Amazon. Now, you can, if you want to buy the, the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey, the head of the Church of Satan, you can buy it through Amazon. You can buy any, you can buy Jewish books that talk about Jesus. In fact, one by Dr. Chafer of Princeton University called uh, Jesus in the Talmud. He says that Jesus is burning in fiery excrement in hell. That's Jesus in the Talmud by Professor Schaefer. You can buy that book. They don't mind it. And it talks about our Lord Jesus. But when I offer a book that quotes the rabbis, I quote the rabbis. They say, ooh, we don't want people to know that. Ooh, we, we can't tell people that. So, uh, you see, it, it, it's an amazing thing. Finally, the veil is torn off the pious veneer of Judaism. This is why Jesus told the Jews, you're of your father, the devil. Th th that's what, and I quote all these rabbis. Now, if the rabbis said it, it has to be correct, doesn't it? Well, at least that's what they believe. I just thought that people would like to know what rabbis believe. They don't believe in the Old Testament. No, no, they don't. They've got their own. Jesus says, you don't believe in the Old Testament prophets. He told the Jews, you have for your religion the traditions of the elders. You believe what your elder rabbis have to say. That's your religion. And that's who I quote in this book. You would think that the World Zionist Congress would thank me. But instead, they make it impossible for anybody to buy my book. Now, I'm not crying over it. I'm not boo-hooing and saying, why don't you let me sell my book? Boo-hoo-hoo. No, I'm not. They did me a favor. Did you know that books, I don't know, double, triple, what, what is it, Jerry? I don't, it's, uh, they, he's, Jerry's over here telling me that the book sales have tripled. They banned it. They refused to sell this book because it's a truthful, honest volume 
But Christians say, I want to read it. I want to know what the truth is. Well, I'd like you to know too, friends. What they're trying to stop, you need to find out about. This is the only book in the entire world entitled Holy Serpent of the Jews, the only one. Some people say, well, text, you just can't tell the truth. You got to lie or you won't sell books. That's not so, friends. I, 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 I don't lie. I tell the truth. Now, if the World Zionist Congress and Amazon want to ban my books, that's okay. Jesus will get this book into the hands of everybody he wants to have it. You will love this book. Why? Because it's the truth. And I quote all of these famous rabbis. Isn't it amazing? The rabbis believe this. That's what they teach their people. Of course, they don't tell the Gentiles, but I do. Now, I want you to have this book. It's $20. Add $5 shipping and handling. Just $25. You can have this book. You can discover that Judaism is the most colossal devil religion ever. Again, a total of $25 that includes shipping. As for Holy Serpent of the Jews. We'll get it right on its way to you. And listen, the World Zionist Congress will not stop this book. Amazon will not stop this book because God will get it into the hands of every Christian whom he wants to read it. Now, a lot of Christians, most of them will not read it. I understand that. Most will not read this book, but those who are hungry for the truth, those who want to know about the rabbi's secret plan, to crush their enemies and bring about global dominion. They, they want to know that. And I'm sure you do too. Again, $25, and we'll send it right to you. All you have to do is phone us toll-free, 1-800-234-9673. Or you can go to our website, powerofprophecy.com. Or you can write to us, Power of Prophecy, 1708 Patterson, P-A-T-D-E-R-S-O-N, Road, Austin, Texas, 78733. And now let's return to our regular program. This is Secrets, Volume 248. Hey, did you know that according uh, to a major London newspaper, 57 scientific studies were authored in the year 2016? And these 57 different scientific studies say that climate change, also called global warming, is a myth. It's a hoax. It's not even true. Wow. 57. Well, you know, the news media, the fake news are always saying, oh, it's it's true. In, In fact, Al Gore said by 2015, 2015, he says, Global warming, there's going to be a global catastrophe. Well, I woke up on 2016, January the 1st, looked out my door, and you know what? It still looked the same as the day before. (laughs) It's still, in fact, I'm looking out today. It's 2017, isn't it? It's two years after Albert Gore said the world was going to end. Albert Gore says global warming and climate change are going to do in the world. But I'm two years later, I'm looking. It's a nice sunny day. It's a wonderful day. It's a little bit cool outside, maybe. Hmm. Now, did you know that NASA, the National Space Administration, says that things are getting cooler, cooler in Greenland? That's interesting. They, they say the Arctic is not melting. And Greenland and places like that in Canada, way up north Canada, are not melting. And, you know, we still have our east coast and our west coast. Al Gore said all those towns and cities on the the west coast and the east coast will, will be inundated with water. But he was wrong. Of course, he's sort of an idiot, isn't he? The world is just like it always has been. That changes from time to time and Little ice ages come and cold snaps come and then global warming comes and, and it ends and it comes back and, but, but they say basically it's just like it was 
back in the 1600s. That's 400 years ago. And it's the, it's the same temperature. Wow. The nuts have been proven wrong. The nut cases. Boy. And 57 studies say that global warming is a hoax. But you, but you read the New York Times, the Washington Post, what do they say? Oh, every scientist believes in global warming. If you don't, well, you're, you're, you're a climate denier. You're way behind. You don't understand science. You idiot. You need to read some science. You need to read 57 studies. Boy, they're dumb, aren't they? Well, in any case, there is no global warming. It's being proven right now in front of our eyes. And Al Gore, he's still burning up all that gasoline and all by flying around in a big old jet, his own personal jet. But there is no global warming. But he's making money by telling people, we're going to, you know, Chicken Little is here. The whole world's going to end. I guess he's going to create a new year now. 2015 came and went. He'll probably make it like 2100. That sounds good. 2100, the world's going to end. Oh, boy. Well, it seems that the Talmud has a dirty little secret. The Jewish Talmud and the the religion of the Jewish rabbis, of the Orthodox Jewish rabbis, has a secret. Did you know that there is more pedophilia among the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, than there are among any other race? It's amazing. Now, Jewish pedophilia is censored, and you don't hear much about it, but it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Boy, well, I'll tell you, I don't have any respect for anyone that would harm a child. And Jesus himself said that it would be better that a, a yoke be tied around your neck and a millstone put on and, and, and tied to your neck and you be thrown into the depth of the sea. It'd be better than what's going to happen to you on judgment day. Anybody who has harmed a child, Jesus is going to take care of. Oh, I feel sorry for you. You sexually harmed a little child, a boy or a girl. You wait and see. You wait and see what's going to happen to you. Friends, we can't do that. We've, we've got to love. We've got to respect. God has put us here as adults to care for these children. And pedophilia, it's rotten. It's dirty. I know the elite, the, the rich of this world, they're down in the mire and the mud. And little kids are being assaulted everywhere you turn. And Jews are among the most prominent in this horrible exercise. If you find out anything like this, my friends, please expose it. Please do. Now, it seems that a Christian pastor, let me make sure I've got this story right, because you need to know about this. In, a, in North Carolina, there's a church, uh, I believe it was a, a Methodist church, and it seems that people just sort of quit going to that church. They had their building there, and they said, what are we going to do with it? Well, the Muslim population kept growing in that little town in North Carolina. And the Muslims bought up the church. That's pretty disgraceful, isn't it? They took the cross down, and I suppose they put up their symbol. And they announced that we're going to be having mosque services. The local imam, that's their same equivalent to being a pastor. Now, you would think that the Christian pastors would warn the Christians there to stay away from that imam, that mosque, and the Muslim faith. But guess what? All of them uh, said it was great. All of the local pastors, why, there was a head of the St. Paul's Episcopal Church, and th th there was three different Baptist congregations, they said they were happy to have this imam in his Muslim mosque in their midst. The local United Methodist Church, the United Church of Christ, a Pentecostal church. Man, I think about it. Presbyterian, Methodist, three Baptist congregations. 
They all said this is great. And they all had a big interfaith worship service. They all went down to the mosque and they celebrated. That's just disgraceful, friends. Listen, my friends, the Bible says if you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have the Father. They said we have Allah, but Jesus is not his prophet. That's what the Muslims say. Jesus is not the Son of God. He's not the Christ. But he is. And these filthy, dirty pastors agree with the Muslim imam. They, they said we all agree. It's wonderful. We'd love to have this Muslim. And these ba- Baptists and Presbyterians and Episcopals, they all said that they all worship the same God as the imam did. My friends, you don't know anything about Islam. But let me tell you something. Allah is the moon goddess. That's right. That was back in, you could study it. Allah is not the name for God in Arabic. It's Elah. Elah. Allah is not the name for God. It's their goddess, their God. A Muslim deity takes over a church that used to be Christian, and all of the Christian pastors in this town come together to celebrate it. That's just disgusting. Now, while we have that happening, I want to tell you what happened over in Egypt. It it seems that 21 Christians were taken captive by ISIS. But only 20 were were Christians for very long. You see, the, the, the ISIS people captured 21 people. They captured these 21 people. 20 of them were Christians, but a 21st person was nothing. He came from Chad, a country over in Africa. He was a black man. And they, 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 they took him prisoner too because he said, I'm not a Muslim. Well, you're going to become a prisoner too. And they put all these 21 people, 20, Christians and one man, a black man from Chad, they put them all in a jail cell. And they told all of you, you have a day to decide that you're going to convert to Islam. If you stay Christian, we will behead you. We will take off your head. And you know, they, the Christians all talked about it. They said, what are we going to do? And they all decided to stay with Jesus. They knew they were going to have their heads cut off the next day. All they had to do was say, okay, we renounce Jesus. We accept Allah. We accept Mohammed. That's all they had to do to save their lives, but they wouldn't do it. And what about that man from Chad? That black man. What did he do? Why? All he had, he would, he, he didn't believe in anything. It seemed that when, when they caught him prisoner, all he had to say was, okay, I'll, I'll be a Muslim. Didn't hurt him, we did it. But he, they, they say that he, 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 he just sat down in the, on the floor of the cell and listened to the Christians. And the Christians debated it among themselves and they prayed about it. And then they began to sing, to sing hymns to Jesus. And they sang the Psalms. And the next day the Muslims came in and said, what is your choice? Will we cut off your heads or will you renounce this Jesus? And all 20 Christians said, we will not renounce our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Then we will cut off your heads, he said. But you, you, the man from Chad, he said to him, what about you? And the man from Chad said, when I was taken prisoner, I didn't believe in the God. But I have been here, and I've been listening and watching these Christians. I now believe like they do. I believe like they do. And they said, then we will cut off your head too. He said, I cannot but say I believe in their God and their Savior, Jesus Christ. Why did he believe, my friends? He saw Jesus in the lives of these 20 Egyptian Christians. And they cut off the heads of all 21. 
And this man, who became a Christian that very day, was just like the thief who was on the cross beside Jesus. And the thief said, Lord, remember me. Remember me when you go to paradise. Remember me. And Jesus said, this day, you will be with me in paradise. That man from Chad, he was a black man. But it didn't matter the color of his skin. Because his skin, his flesh stayed here on earth. But his spirit is with Jesus in heaven. Think about this story, my friends. A true story. The man from Chad who was beheaded the very day he became a Christian because he had witnessed the behavior and the conduct of 20 Christians, all of whom were beheaded. Well, let's talk a little bit about Robert Mueller. Robert Mueller. You know, it seems that it's a big rig job. It's a, it's a setup. They, they, they say that, that there's no Russia involvement. There's no Russia conspiracy. But now they're claiming that Trump, you know, he, he obstructed justice by firing Comey, the FBI chief. And it seems that Comey says that when he got fired, he must have called over to his buddy, Rosenstein, who's the second man at the Justice Department. And there was Sessions, the new attorney general, But he couldn't do anything because, after all, he had recused himself from doing any work on the Russian situation. And Rosenstein appointed a special counsel to look into all of that. He appointed Robert Mueller, the former FBI director, a crook and a crummy person who had over... He was FBI chief, Robert Mueller was, during 9-11. Remember all those shady dealings? Robert Mueller, he was <laughs> he was FBI director during the time of George W. Bush. And then he stayed on and he became FBI director during the, the early days of Obama, Barack Obama. Now there's two traitors for you. There's two dishonest men, George W. Bush and Barack Obama. And Robert Mueller was there. And boy, he did some shenanigans. Do you know of anything that he ever caught? Do you know of any of those the 9-11 conspirators? Did he ever bring any of them to justice? No, not a one. And they made him the special counsel. And now he says, I'm investigating the obstruction of Donald Trump. Now, let me tell you, he's a crook. Now, he brought with him three top flight lawyers. And one of them was the foundation, the Clinton Foundation lawyer. The Clinton Foundation lawyer. And Mueller knew about the Clinton Foundation, too. He covered up for that. I mean, this this guy is a crook. And they've made him special counsel. And, of course, all the Democrats, or Demorats, as I call them, and the Republican rhino said, oh, he's a nice, honest man. He's a man of integrity. No, he's not. He's a traitor. He's a liar. He's no good. He's a filthy special counsel, let me tell you. Of course, he's going to do what he can to impeach, to get President Trump impeached. Now, here's what President Trump needs to do. Now, his Justice Department head, his Attorney General, says that I can't do anything because I've recused myself. Oh, how stupid. Well, it's our policy. You, you know, you set the policy yourself. It's not a law. It's your policy. Change the policy. Hey, I work for God here. I'm My name is Tex Mars. I'm with Power of Prophecy. The policies we have here, we will change. Unless they're in the Bible, of course. Well, that's not a biblical policy, Mr. Sessions. So change it. And do your duty and fire Robert Mueller. If you don't, if you don't, he will, of course, impeach. He will, well, actually, first he'll in, indict. President Trump, and then the House and the Senate will impeach him and they will convict him. He'll be out. We'll lose the man that the American people voted as president. We'll lose him because Robert Mueller is a dishonest person. And Rosenstein, who is in the Justice Department, 
He's the guy that appointed him. He's also a crook and a Barack Obama appointee. This is a, this is a done deal. This is a rigged job. Trump can fire the, you see, he's not an independent counsel. He's just a special counsel. Trump has every right to fire him. Now the Democrats would raise holy hell. Well, there's no such thing as holy hell, is there? <laughs> Unholy hell. They'll raise Cain. They'll say, oh, it's terrible. He's uh, obstructing justice. He's trying to hide it. And, and he needs to be indicted. But who's left to indict him? Sessions? His attorney general? Well, he's not going to indict him. If I were Trump, I would instantly fire Robert Mueller as a new special counsel. Now, according to the public law, the public law, it says the special counsel cannot be special counsel if one of the people he's investigating is his friend or an associate. And that's what Comey was. They worked together. For 10 years, he and Comey were big buddies, big friends, big pals. He's not qualified then to be special counsel because he was a friend of Comey's. The man that Trump supposedly obstructed justice with. We need to get rid of all. Listen, just close the books on the Russia thing, President Trump. Close it up and go on and give us a tax break and give us build the wall and get rid of that Obamacare that you promised us. And forget about the Russian thing. It's all a big bunch of hocus pocus. Everybody knows it. Now they'll scream, they'll holler. Who cares whether they holler or not? They can't do anything because you control the Justice Department. You're the president of the United States. Get some guts, man, and do it. Well, then there's the Navy chaplain has been kicked out of praying in Jesus' name. I don't have time for that today, it looks like. And the story of the Southern Baptists, I wanted to talk about that a little while. You see, they voted down at their convention. They wanted to bring in more immigrants. They don't want to build a wall. They want to have open borders. They're getting paid by the federal government for every immigrant that comes in. Did you know the Southern Baptists got $250 million last year? No wonder. No wonder they love having no walls, having open borders. The Southern Baptists are helping the immigrants to invade. They're helping us to, helping them to avoid the law. And they're eating up $250 million. It's a disgusting thing to pay these churches. And they're being paid a quarter of a billion dollars. Then, of course, there's the Democrats. The last item of today, and all of these things they're doing, they're creating an Orwellian sense of unreality in society, which was used to destabilize America and overthrow the president. If you believe in President Trump, now, I don't believe him as a Christian, but as a president. If you want to see what he what he's going to be, if you want him to finish his agenda and keep his promises and make sure he's not impeached for something he didn't do, then you need to raise Cain too. Or I should say you should raise heaven or bring heaven down. Help our president, my friends, and pray for him too. This is Tex Mars. Been great bringing these secrets to you today and my prayer is you'll tune in each week during the same time and discover the power of prophecy.